Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question 1 which is worth 30 marks. This is a complex numbers question and let's get started on part A. So parts A and B are worth a combined 15 marks and we're asked in part A to write the values of Z1 and the complex conjugate of Z1. So let's have a look at the Argand diagram to find out the value of Z1. And an Argand diagram is very similar to the XY plane, except the X axis is now called the real axis and the Y axis is now called the imaginary axis. So using our Argand diagram, we can see that Z1 lies here and a complex number always has the form A plus BI, where A is the real part and the B is the imaginary part. So for Z1, the A, which is going to be the real value, we're going to go up to the real axis to find out what value that will be. And if we go up to the real axis, we see that that hits the real axis at minus 2. So therefore, the A value for Z1 is going to be minus 2. And then to find the B value, which is the imaginary value, we're going to go across to the vertical axis. And that hits the vertical axis at minus 3. So our complex number Z1 is minus 2 minus 3i. So you have to put in the i yourself after the number that's on the imaginary axis, but the number on the real axis just stays as it is. So that's Z1, and now we're going to find the complex conjugate of Z1, which is denoted with the bar above Z1, like this. So as I said, that bar above it means it's the complex conjugate. And just in case you don't know what the complex conjugate is, I'm going to write it out. So if we have a complex number, z is equal to a plus bi, as I've written in the top left-hand corner of the screen, the complex conjugate of z will be a minus bi. So essentially, you just change the sign before the imaginary part. So if it's a plus, you're going to change it to a minus, but if it's already a minus, you're going to change it to a plus. So in our case here, we have minus 2 minus 3 iota. So minus 2, which is the real part, will stay the same. That never changes in the complex conjugate. However, the sign before the imaginary part, which in our case here is minus 3i, that's going to change from being a negative to a positive. So in the sample I used above, in the purple writing on the top left hand corner of the screen, we had a positive plus bi, and that went to a negative minus bi in the complex conjugate. Here, we already had a minus, so that's going to go to a plus. So the complex conjugate of Z1 will be minus 2 plus 3i. So that's our answer for A part 1. Now let's have a look at A part 2. So A part 2 wants us to plot and label the complex conjugate of Z1 on the Argand diagram above. So let's have a look. So we already have Z1 plotted. So the complex conjugate of Z1 is minus 2 plus 3i. So remember that the minus 2 is the real value and plus 3 is the imaginary value. So that means we're going to go to minus 2 on the real axis, which is here, and we're going to go to plus 3 on the imaginary axis, which is up here, and we're going to find where both of those points meet, which is right here, and that's the complex conjugate of Z1. So that's my answer for A part 2, the complex conjugate of Z1 plotted and labelled on the Argand diagram. So now let's have a look at part B. So here we have to plot and label Z2 and Z3. So let's go up and have a look. So Z2 is equal to minus 5 plus 3i. So we're going to go to minus 5 on the real axis, which is here, plus 3 on the imaginary axis, which is up here. And the coordinate at which they meet is here. So that means our coordinate Z2 is right there. And now we're going to do the same thing for Z3. And Z3 is equal to 4 minus 2i. So this time we're going to go to 4 on the real axis and we're going to go to minus 2 on the imaginary axis. So both of those points are going to meet right here and that gives us Z3. So that's your answer for part B of the question. Now let's have a look at part C. So part C is worth 10 marks and we're going to start by doing Z2 minus Z3. So once again Z2 is minus 5 plus 3i and we have to minus from that 4 minus 2i. Now I'm going to put both of them in brackets and you're going to see why in a minute. So once again, this part here is Z2 and the second part here is Z3. So we're going to have to expand out both of these brackets. The first bracket will stay the same. It will stay as minus 5 plus 3i, but we have a minus before the bracket with the Z3. 
So it's slightly more complicated with the second bracket. So we have minus by four, which is going to be minus four. And then we have minus by minus two i. So we have two negatives here, a double negative, and we have two negatives multiplied by each other. That changes to a positive. So we're going to have plus two i. So that's why I have the bracket there. As some people there would make the error of writing minus four minus two i. However, as you have two negatives there, the minus two i changes to plus two i. So now we have to add together our common terms. So we have minus five and minus four, and we have plus three i and plus two i. So we can add the minus five and the minus four together, and that's going to give me minus nine. And we can add the plus three i plus two i together to get plus five i. So z2 minus z3 is equal to minus nine plus five i. So the next part wants us to find the modulus of z2 minus z3. Now we have a formula for the modulus that isn't in the formula book. So I highly recommend writing this down and learning it before your exam. So the formula is if you have a complex number a plus bi, where a is the real value and b is the imaginary value, the modulus of that is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And the modulus is represented by those two lines either side of the complex number. So we already have z2 minus z3, that was minus nine plus five i. So that means we're trying to find the modulus of minus nine plus five i. So in this case, minus nine is my a and plus five is my b. So that's going to be equal to the square root of minus nine squared plus five squared. So minus nine squared, and be careful here that if you're putting this into the calculator to put the brackets around the minus nine, that that's going to give you plus 81. And it is plus because you have minus nine multiplied by a minus nine. And when you multiply two negatives by each other, you get a positive. So that's going to be 81. And then five squared is 25. So that's going to be the square root of 81 plus 25. And 81 plus 25 is 106. So therefore, the modulus of z2 minus z3 is the square root of 106. And you can leave your answer in sort form like that to get full marks. So that's the answer for part C of the question. Now let's have a look at part D. So here we have to investigate if 4 minus 2i is a solution of that particular equation. And to find out if a particular factor is a solution of an equation, you have to put it in for the variable which in this case is z. And if you get it equal to zero, then it is a solution. But if it isn't equal to zero at the end, then it is not a solution. So we're going to put four minus two i in place of z into that equation. And hopefully at the end, we'll get it equal to zero. If we don't, it isn't a solution. And if we do, it is a solution. So that means we're going to have four minus two i squared plus two i by four minus two i minus seven i. So four minus two i squared is four minus two i multiplied by four minus two i. So I recommend writing it out like that so that it's easier to do. So remember when you're multiplying out two brackets, you're gonna multiply the first number in the first one by the first number in the second. So that's gonna be four by four here and four by four is gonna give us 16. And then you're going to multiply the first number in the first by the second number in the second. So that's gonna be four multiplied by minus two i and that's gonna give me minus eight i. And now we're gonna do the second number in the first by the first number in the second. So that's gonna be minus two i by four, which is also minus eight i. And finally, the second number in the first by the second number in the second. And that's gonna give me plus four i squared. So that's the first part of the equation done. And now we have to do two i multiplied by four minus two i. So two i by four is eight i and plus two i multiplied by minus two i is gonna give me minus four i squared. And we still have this minus seven i left over and that should be equal to zero if it is a solution. So here we have some pairs of terms which will cancel out. So for example, plus four i squared will cancel with minus four i squared as plus four i squared minus four i squared just leaves me with nothing. And also one of the minus eight i's will cancel with the plus eight i as minus 8i plus 8i will also leave me with nothing. So then we're left with 16 minus 8i minus 7i. And we have two like terms here that we can add together. And that's the minus 8i minus 7i. 
and minus 8i minus 7i is minus 15i. So that gives me 16 minus 15i is equal to 0. However, as we both know, 16 minus 15i is not equal to 0. So therefore, z3 is not a solution of the equation. So that's our answer for part D, which was worth 5 marks. And that was the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.